Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you why using a weight in a loop can produce some unwanted results and how we can avoid the issue with using a weight in a loop. It is essential to carefully consider when to use a weight keyword in a loop to prevent inefficiency and performance issues in software development. And that's the main reason for me to create this video. So what happens when the await keyword is added inside the loop? By using a wait in the loop, we pause the iteration to allow the awaited method to execute before proceeding to the next iteration. Therefore, using a wait within the loop means we are executing everything within the loop synchronously. So we are beating the purpose of the async and the wait keywords in C sharp. Now let's see this with an example. I will create a new class here and name it await in loops. Let's make the class static and create a new static async method that returns task of list int, name it result async and provide a single int parameter for the delay. Now I will use a single list named numbers which will be a list of integer numbers and populate it with numbers from 10 to 90. I will use this list as a source for processing. Also, I need another list named result and it will be an empty list for now. So I have a list of numbers and I can iterate through it using the for each loop in this case. Inside the loop, I will have a few simple actions. First, let's print that I am processing the current number. Then I will await the task.delay with the delay parameter. With this, I want to simulate the waiting for the process to be completed before finishing the remaining work in the loop and continuing to the next iteration. After the delay, I will print another message that I have processed the number and then simply add that number to the result list. Once all the iterations are done, I will simply print another message to state that the process is over and return the result. Now, one important thing to note here is that using a wait in the loop facilitates the regulated execution of the elements within the loop. This allows our code to pause while we await the completion of some additional long running task. However, this also means it may take a long time to complete the iteration through our collection and to execute all the actions. To see the result of this method, let's simply open the program class and await the call to our method using the class name and then call that method with a delay of 200. Now let's run the app and check the console output. You can see that the program processed the numbers precisely in the order we provided them in the list. There was no out of order execution that occurred in the processing. So basically we started processing the number and we didn't move to another iteration until the process was over. Once it was over, we printed the result and moved to another iteration. Now. I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book which you can find linked in the description below. Feel free to check out the book if you want to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. And also check out Blazor course to create the client C Sharp apps without using JavaScript. Again, the links are in the description below. Now let's continue. Since we know that using a wait in our loop makes it synchronous, we can explore how to make our loop asynchronous. To do that, I will include the task when all method in the equation. In simple terms, task when all allows us to await multiple methods simultaneously and return a completed task when they are all completed. This is exactly what I wanted to do in this method, to finish all the processing actions and then print the finished message. But I don't want the processing to be synchronous for each iteration. Thus, using task when all is the perfect thing to do. To show this example, let's create a new class and name it 
task when all in loops. Again, I will make the class static and then create a new private static async method that returns task. Name it process number async and provide three parameters, the number, the delay and the list result. Inside this method, I can have the same logic I had in the previous one. So let's navigate to the previous class and copy the code inside the loop and then simply paste it here. Now I can create the main static async method that will return task of list int as the previous one and will have the same name result async with the same parameter. Again, let's create a new list of numbers populated with the numbers from 10 to 90. I also need another empty list as a result. Now the important part. First, I will create a new variable named tasks and I will use it to store all the processing tasks inside it. With that done, let's create a new for each loop and loop through each number from the numbers list. And inside the loop, I will use the tasks list to add the result from my private method with all three arguments provided. Here we are not adding the await keyword to the for each loop. We simply iterate over each number and execute the process number async method that returns a new task and populates the tasks list. Now, once I populate the list of tasks, I will pass it to the task when null method. So, as you can see, outside the for each loop, I simply await the task when all to complete before returning the result. That said, let's simply print the message that we are done processing numbers and return the result. Ok, with this done, let's navigate to the program class, hide the first call and execute this new method. Now, when we run the app, as expected, the result shows that the numbers are processed in no specific order. Also, we did not have to wait for one number to finish processing before moving to the next. So unlike our synchronous for each, in our task when all example, we are not processing the values in any guaranteed order, as each task computes asynchronously. Also, this approach provides faster execution as we are not waiting for each task to be completed. Well, let's prove that. As you can see, I already have the benchmark test prepared. And all I have to do is to hide this line and call the benchmark runner dot run method and provide the name of the class. And now I can run the app. As we expected, using task when all is a lot more performant. Of course, if this is something we want to do. Now, we have to pay attention to some trade-offs here. Task when all makes it hard to track execution orders as operations may be done in parallel. On the other hand, using a wait within the loop enables execution tracking by waiting for completion before moving to the next iteration. Furthermore, managing exceptions becomes more challenging when thrown within task when all, because if any of the awaited tasks throws an exception, it will propagate to the awaiting thread. On the other hand, when we await each task within the loop, we have a better view of the exceptional condition. The trade-off, however, may result in decreased performance due to enforcing linear processing for each step in our loop. Lastly, task when all is useful when multiple tasks operate independently for each other. This means the execution of a task is not dependent on the result of the previous task. Of course, as usual, the choice between the two approaches depends on the specific goals we aim to achieve. Excellent. With all said and done, 
I will finish the video now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in another one. Until then, all the best.